Good afternoon, you over 3,000 glorious people and the 83% who have yet to subscribe. So the lists have gone up for the NIGT and I thought let's have a little look at them and see what filth is going to be abundant. <laughs> So, yep, on the 3rd and the 4th of August, so next week, we'll be having a 47-player tournament of Age of Sigma 4th Edition at the Black Box in Belfast. And we've got some pretty big names from across the uh, the scene in the UK coming to attendance. So it's five rounds, 2,000 points. Obviously, grudge matches are allowed, and they have already been dished out. There is no blood rules, major minus for the scoring system, and obviously... Tiebreakers are victory points, and secondary tiebreakers are differentials. The TOs know all that stuff. So, yeah, the lists are all in, so we're going to have a little look. We're going to do an, a little pick of some of the ones that look really fun. Um, I'll do mine as well while I'm, I'm here. It makes it easier, just rather doing a separate video on it. First up, to kick it off, we'll do my list. So, I'm coming in with a Seraphon list. I'm using the Sunclaw Starhost. It's a three drops, and I come in at 1,920 points. So uh, I've got a little bit of wiggle room if I can uh, drop some stuff for later on and bring something else. Obviously, my spell laws are the law of primal jungles because plus one rend is awesome. And just like nearly everyone else, I'm taking the morbid conjuration for my manifestations. You know, purple suns, grave tide, all that good stuff. So I also have a regiment with my general which is a slant star master with the incandescent uh, rectress. So basically, at the end of the, the turn, I'm going to basically heal D3. Um, I've got a reinforced unit of uh, Croxador uh, warp spawns. This was actually a mistake. I was meant to take normal Croxagore, but um, tested it out last night. They work quite well, so don't need to worry about poking the guys to get that changed. Then two units of Saurus Warriors and then a Skink Star Priest just for that additional casting. Also, it's really kind of handy on a 2+. plus. You can just give a unit um, crit auto wounds, which is really quite nice. So, could come in handy. For the second regiment, I've got a veteran on an Agrodon, and he has the Reptilian Cunning. And then I have a unit of six reinforced Agrodon Lancers, who are pretty much my workhorse for my army. And then finally, bringing up the final regiment, I have a Skink Starseer. Because why would I not want to turn off people's war saves? Because it's just hilarious. And then obviously I have my Realm Shaper engine for um, my faction terrain. So that's my list. Um, it's okay. It's been performing well last night. Played against Lumineth Realm Lords and trounced them um, in a test game. So it was pretty good. Feeling quite confident with it. But we'll see. There, there are some pretty strong lists here this weekend. Next up, we have Solomon, who literally has won the uh, event last year and who is two years in a row Irish Grandmaster at AOS and the new captain of the uh, Northern Irish Age of Sigma team, um, taking over from big Stevie Mitchell. But he is coming in with his obviously six uh, Blade Geists Night Haunt list, because like I said in the review, they're pretty busted, so it's kind of obvious that a lot of the... Uh, the big competitive players are going towards them. He's using, obviously, Death Stalkers. Um, 2,000 points, drop three. Spell lore is the lore of the underworld. And, as you can guess, Morbid Conjuration for those Purple Suns and Grave Tides. He has a regiment with his general, which is the Kurgas Cruciator for 150 points, who's his general. And he has the ruler of the Spectral Hosts. Then he has a unit of chain ghasts, and then the Reichnor Grim Healer, the Dreadblade Horrors, which are the unit of two um, cavalry models, which are pretty good. And then he has two units of hex wraiths, and then finally he has another regiment with a Guardian of Souls, with the Light sh Shard of the Harvest Moon, and then three units of reinforced Blade Geist Revenants. And then to bring it all up in the rear, that's it. So pretty solid list. I'm expecting Solomon to do pretty well at the event, if not be at the top table by the end of it. Um, he is an incredible player. So um, and apparently a an all time top night haunt player.
according to himself. Although I've never seen him play Night Haunt, so it should be quite interesting to see what he does. I've always thought he was a sword like Grave Lord player. Next up, we have Colin the Old Man Cochrane, who is another team player, um, and he's bringing up Stormcast. No chariots, I believe. So his army is obviously Stormcast Eternals, and he's got the Vanguard Wing, 2,000 points and a two-drop list. Spell Law, Law of the Storms, Prayer Law, Prayers of the Storm Host, and his Manifestations, Manifestations of the Storm. So he's obviously bringing the Stormcast Eternal Manifestations with him. And he has a regiment with a Starry Soul Blight. Um, an interesting choice, because I do believe that she is going to disappear in 12 months' time, because she's one of the second edition um, heroes. Vanguard Paladors with strike, Star Strike Javelins. He has three units, or two units of them, and then a unit of Vanguard Raptors with Long Strike Crossbows that have been reinforced. Um, these are looking pretty tasty uh, in regards to what they are. Um, it be interesting to see how that changes once the Stormcast get a new range of miniatures, which we should be seeing on the 10th. And then he has, um, in his next regiment, he has the Lord of Veritant with the Mirror Shield, a Knight of Elixilor with the Staunch Defender, and then a unit of Vanquishers that are being upgraded. No chariots for Colin, which is very strange to see, because you know me, he normally runs about eight of them. Um, so it should be interesting to see how this list does. Next up, we have Rick Myhilf with his Lumineth Realm Lords, a pretty much really big name kicking around the scene in England and Wales. I believe he's played for either of the national teams. Um, and he has a very cool thematic narrative, very narrative Lumineth Realm Lords list. So he has um, a two drop list. He's got the Hurricane Temple. He's got his Primal Energy Law for his Manifestations and Lord of Heesh. And then his general regiment is Severtath, who's his general, with three Hurricane Spirit of the Winds. And then his second regiment is a Wind Mage with another three Hurricane Spirit of the Winds. I mean, this is a, a pure narrative list, and it's good to see that we have narrative players like Rick attending the event. So good on you, Rick. Next up, we have Miles Benjamin with the only Iron Jaws list at the attendance of the event. So it had to be shown. It's a grunting list at 1,980 1, points using the Auric Warclans, Iron Jaws, Iron Fist, 2,000 points to drop. And it's pretty solid. Um, he is General's Regiment. He's got a Mega Boss and a Maw Crusher. Gotta love the cabbages. General, Mega Bossy, and Trophy of Skulls. And then a unit of Gore Grunters reinforced. And then a more grunter with hacking and crew. And then in the next regiment, he has a mega boss on foot, some brute rages, those uh, really half naked orcs, which are going to be pretty cool. Obviously, the mega boss is there to buff them, with, that's reinforced. And then he has a unit of brutes reinforced. Love to see it. And then two, uh, some two big gore choppers. Pretty cool rest. It's nice to see that the Iron Jaws are here because. Um, there isn't very many players around with them. Next up, we have the man, the legend, that is AOS Pete, who, from his lovely podcast, he is bringing a lovely Seraphon list with the Sunclaw Starhost. Three drops. Should be interesting to see how we match up if we play. The Lord of the Primal Jungles. It's almost like he's copied me. And the Morbid Conjuration, because that's basically what the most <laughs> manifestations are. I'll do the, the breakdown of what all of the stats are for everything um army wise and and uh, manifestations at the end of the video so he has his general regiment slan star master because yeah so it's, it's a must general uh, incandent radiance and beast master then he has a unit of agaron lancers reinforced another unit of lancers reinforced and then a unit of saurus guard and then he has a skink star seer because again he wants to turn off those ward seers like everyone else and then he has two units of hunters, one with dart pipes and one with stone, star stone bolus. A unit of Croxagore, and then the final, he has the Regiment of Renown series of Cinderfall, Callus and Toll, and then Toll's Companions. So he has a little bit of a narrative element in there. It's really nice to see that Pete's bringing the narrative, which is kind of cool. Looking, hopefully, I'll get to play him. It should be a good laugh. Next up, we have Shane Ford, who is the coach for the um, NIAOS team who is running a three scroll, war scroll dream list of Slaves to Darkness. So it's 2,000 points, obviously. Um, and he has the 
God's Wrath Warband, and he has the Lore of the Dam for his spell host, and then he has the Eighth Right Machineries for his manifestations. His General's Regiment obviously is going to include Archeon, and apparently Archeon can Slayer of Kings Archeon, so those mirror matches should be quite interesting. Then he has a unit of reinforced Chaos Warriors with the Mark of Nurgle. There's a shock. Then he has a re second regiment with a Demon Prince, Radiance of the Dark Glory, the Conqueror's Crown, Nurgle, because that Nurgle Demon Prince is going to support those warriors, and some wings. And then he has another two units of Chaos Warriors with the Mark of Nurgle. Mark of Nurgle on Chaos Warriors is incredibly strong, so it should be quite interesting to see that Demon Prince popping out those Eye of the God rules. Interesting, nice list. And finally, we got Jared Dickey with his Sons of Bermet. And it's the Foot, Fat Foot Frank. Some of the list names in this are actually quite amusing. So we have um, Sons of Bermet, obviously King Brood Stomper, no battle formation. Interesting. 2,000 points limit and a two drop. Prayer Law, King Brood Stomper, Prayer Law. Then he has Regiment. In his general's regiment, King Brood himself, who's his general. Then he has a Kraken Eater to kick those objectives. Then his second regiment, he has a Gatebreaker with a Mega Gargant. I could do that better and Lucky Shiny Hat. And then he has a Beast Smasher Mega Gargant. So basically, he's got, what, four models on the table. Really cool army. And uh, yeah, hopefully Jared will do really well. We got a little bit of breakdown of the stats. So... Armies wise, we have five Lumineth Realm Lord players, four Gargan players, four Soul Light Grave Lord players, three Nurgle players, three Nighthaunt players, three Seraphon players, three Skaven players, three Slaves to Darkness players, three Stormcast Eternal players, two Blades of Corn, two Fire Slayers, and then two Iden the Teepkin. And then we have one Cities of Sigmar, Daughters of Cain. One Flesh Eater Court, one Gloom Spy Gits, a Mad Lad with his Hidden Knights of Slanesh, one Iron Jaws, one Cruel Boys, one Ogamore Tribes, and then, apparently, one OC Outborn Reapers. So there's a few more, obviously, other stats, which is good, pretty decent breakdown. There's only two armies that are not featured in the entire event, which is kind of cool. And then we also have, for our Manifestations law, out of all of the players, we have 20 morbid conjurings conjurations so that's 20 purple suns potentially going to be thrown on the tables we have three aether warp machineries three primal energies uh two judgments of corn obviously for the two corn players we have two crude spines which is kind of interesting and we have the two fire slayer players of both bringing their invocations and then we have two manifestations of the storm two manifestations of doom Dark Manifestations, sorry, Dank Manifestations for that uh, Gits player. A Forbidden Power, and then the Manifestations of Depravity for the um, Slanesh player, and then Twilt Sorceries, which is kind of cool. So, that's the video. I could have gone through all of the list, but there's like 47 of them, and we'd have been here for quite some time. So, I just picked out some of the ones that I really quite like the looks of, and some of the ones that I'm expecting to do pretty well. Uh, no pressure there, Shane. So, yeah, it's going to be a good event. Um, there are some interesting lists. There are some really kind of cool lists with uh, a lot of filth in it. Um, six foxes is just mental. It's always quite amusing when everyone said there was going to be no spam in competitive AOS in 4th edition. Uh, well, guess uh, that's been broken. And, uh, yeah, so it should be fun. There's not many, like, I'm not seeing very many Teclises, not many seen ar many ar um, Nagakis. Archeons are everywhere. I think pretty much nearly every Slaves to Darkness army that's at the event has an Archeon. Um, so, yeah, it should be interesting to see how it pans out. Obviously, there is meta statistics out now, with win ratios and stuff like that. And some of them are, are looking pretty good. Like, Nighthaunt are sitting at top, Lumineth are sitting on second um other armies are like really down at the bottom like sylvaneth and stuff like that but it should be kind of interesting to see how a lot of the armies perform at the weekend and there's some of the top players in in ireland and some pretty decent players from the mainland are coming as well so it should be a good weekend of age of sigma with plenty of banter and lots of beer if it's like anything like last year but i will do another video before it or 
probably after it to do sort of a roundup of what happened and how it all finished and plenty of photos and if the light lets me a little bit of filming in the event it is quite a dark venue um so yeah might see how that plans out but that's the video everyone if you like what i do please like subscribe share do all that good stuff and um yeah see you in the next one